Hello, beautiful strangers, and welcome back to another episode of Myth. When last we left off, we spent some time with Yuri as she learned a little bit more about Oz. And, well, he's not stable. I think, I think would be a good term. No, sane, I think, would be a better term than stable, but, you know, and that doesn't affect us in this world right now, right? <laughs> right? Anyway, uh, I've got nothing to waffle on about, so let's just get back into it, shall we? I guess I fell asleep. It felt like it only lasted for a second, but at the same time, it didn't. This time is a creation. So saying that it felt like a long time from night till morning wasn't right. The version of me that felt like it was a long time disappeared somewhere yesterday. There was no way of knowing if that concept of length was the same as mine either. That was a concept behind this fictional world. Basic rules, so to speak. What was the standard I was using as a basis for talking about that, though? I guess I shouldn't worry about it. It'd just be even more confusing. I just needed to focus on the future. I had to be steadfast and not get off track. Things will change more depending on how much I can write in a notebook. Even if I die, my next self will pick up where I left off. I just had to permanently believe in myself like that or else I wouldn't be able to do anything. <sighs> Morning cleared my head. I didn't even feel that tired. That was perfect though. I should leave aside the concept of time and just focus on the fact that I was able to sleep until morning came. The scene changed to the living room. Yuri was sitting there, as expected. Morning. Morning? Seems like you're getting used to this. I'm just fooling myself. I wouldn't be able to do this without going crazy otherwise. She muttered about how that was a wise decision. How could Yuri be so calm in this situation? I thought she was being a bit brazen, but pop, pop. I was just being jealous of that fact. Did you write in the notebook? I took the notebook out from my pocket. Yeah, about what happened yesterday. I read through it again, too. I thought back on what I wrote. All right, I recalled the majority of it. That's surprising. I thought you'd be more conflicted. Really? Yeah, usually you'd experience some sort of conflict in this situation. She took the chopsticks in hand as she said that. By the time I realized it, there was a rice cooker and a meal before us. I don't see a rice cooker, but whatever. Yuri sipped on her tea. This was written in a notebook. I was apparently unable to notice anything and everything just came to an end. Yuri, even I'm still half doubtful about all this. I didn't want to have any regrets though. That's why I chose to do the bare minimum. That was it. You're strong. Not at all. I'm still waiting for you to just burst out laughing at me. If only she'd call me some gullible idiot for believing all of this. It'd make things so much easier. That's great. If that was true, we could go on some all-expenses-paid vacation, given that we're actors. I guess that was a joke of hers. She was smiling, so I did too. Let's eat, so we can move on. Yuri began to reach out for the meal, so I took a pair of chopsticks as well. I looked over at her. The cooked fish and boiled food disappeared as she brought it towards her pitch-black face. This is a bizarre sight. It was an unbelievable display seeing her eat. Just absurd magic without any tricks to it. I don't get it either. Is the inside of my mouth all black too? I heard her go, ah, so she must have opened her mouth. Yeah, it is. That's strange. She let off an elegant laugh. The tense atmosphere seemed to slacken a bit. Just put up with me being like this. Right. 
food disappeared. The moment I realized that, though, I felt full. If only they put some more detail into this. I'm kind of a fruit connoisseur, after all. What's wrong with it being so simple? I placed my chopsticks down as the rest of our meal disappeared. The two of us just sat around waiting for the next development to happen. There's no telling when the next event and plot might occur. The fact that it couldn't be said to be either sudden or relaxed in pace made it similar to the real world. Everything about this was extreme, though. I couldn't calm my nerves. Mato, would you lend me the notebook? Had she grown tired of the unchanging scene, she suddenly spoke up. Was there something she wanted to check? Anyway, I took the notebook out of my pocket and handed it to her. If today is the second day, then it means we should be going outside. Oh, you're right. And then we should meet those so and needy people in the grasslands. Looks like that'll be the case. We can't be so sure just yet. That's true. We waited for the scenery to change. Man, it isn't changing. I gazed at the wooden gate as I said that. If we're following the plot, then it might, and then it means you're having a discussion with Shimon right now. Then it's just a long, blank space for us. I decided to lean against the gatepost as I waited for the next development. Shimon was the person who was supposed to be preparing breakfast. He's completely vanished, though. Why did you eat with us, then? That was just my character's personality. I can imagine that much, at least. I guess that's true. The real Yuri and the character Yuri were nothing alike. My character had clearly underestimated her. All oh, right, there's something I want to talk about. Look at this. She showed me the notebook. I lifted my heavy hips and handed over to, uh, headed over to her. According to the notebook, the shadows can't function on their own. I was curious about that too. It means that they're fictional characters, right? Right. My existence contradicts that though. The person known as Yuri existing in my past. I could imagine that this was her. Was that the real her? Without even thinking, I was able to, able to say that there was a very high possibility that was the case. My reasoning was because she was aware of that fact as well. The way she thought and the tattoo thing made me realize that she had to be a real person. She felt a little off from the real Yuri, but that was likely just because of the situation and her appearance. Are the shadow people you met truly beings of fiction? Are you saying they're no different from us? I'm using myself in evidence, and her? She pointed at one entry in the notebook. About Hibiki. Hibiki. She was a shadow girl. A very laid-back girl that Shimon adored. I believed she was, a fiction she was a character last time around. That's why I didn't write anything about her real self. If she's really just fiction, then why would she disappear? You mean that if she's not totally fictional, why would the creator have to make her disappear? Right. But there's a possibility that she's an actual human. She might have been erased because she found out something. That make the most sense. So then, did Shimo Hibiki, or so then, what did Hibiki learn? She disappeared from the 11th day onward, the day after Shimon's birthday party. After that, the world changed like a bunch of dominoes collapsing. You could say that she was the herald of the collapse time last time. It's written that I didn't sense any particular will from Katomi, the chief, or any of the other shadows, so that's a bit mysterious. Eerie had suddenly disappeared. I looked around, but there was only grasslands. I didn't see any indication of that unique, shadowy body of hers. Yuri? I looked over a tree in the distance. I saw Yuri there. For some reason, she was climbing the tree. 
That was unexpected. I guess some sort of development is about to happen. The gusty wind made me turn around. There was nothing in the direction I turned to, of course. Just more grassland. However, I felt like something was about to happen. What was it? What, what, what is that? A small girl was lying in the grass. She was young, perhaps an elementary school kid. She wasn't a shadow, though, which meant... So? She opened her eyes as though responding to me. Who are you? Meto Tanabe. Meto Tanabe? She suddenly got up. She seemed different than how the notebook described. So the way she fixed her outfit made that all the more apparent. So was something of a tomboy. She wasn't the type to worry about her outfit. It was like we had met before, as though it was yesterday or a year ago. We have met before. That's the truth. Is that so? Her formal speech was completely different from the description of her in my notebook. In which case... Are you Kiki? Yes. She nodded. Her pupils had a tranquil essence to them. I didn't think she was trying to play a trick on me like so well. Why do you... Didi? Where's my sister? Don't worry. We'll be able to meet her soon. I looked around. Didi would likely show up around where Yuri was. See? Yuri eventually got down from the tree and there was another person there. Let's go, Kiki. Uh, okay. We headed for the tree. Yuri and Riri stood there, gazing at one another. I couldn't sense any hostility from Riri, like how the notebook described her. She practically glared at Yuri. The atmosphere around Riri seemed arrogant and rough. That couldn't have been a coincidence. It was indication between of the gap between her character and her true self. Riri? Kiki shot a concerned gaze at Riri san but she ignored it, instead glaring at Yuri and me. What's going on? Duty san's question tore her through the silent stage. What happened to the active yours, Kiki? Do you finally possess a will? Yes. Allow me to explain. Yuri spoke up. Duty san didn't seem particularly interested in her explanation, though. Who are you? Lili san, Kiki, and I had met before. Given they had regained their self, they were able to recall who was on the stage before as well. Of course, Yuri hadn't actually appeared before, so she was just a random stranger to them. It was no surprise Lili san was cautious. Yuri Yamagami, I'm participating in myth this time around. This time around? This time was the second time this has happened. Lili san, you're from that Aguni world, right? Ridi-san was hostile towards Yuri. She must have felt some sort of discord from what Shimon said in the past and the fact that Yuri was a shadow. Of course, it was important for her to be cautious when it came to this world, because anything could happen here. Explain. It'd be quicker for you just to look at this. Just as the front cover says, Meito wrote it. Can you, you can trust him, right? She thrust the notebook before Didi san. Didi san, in turn, roughly snatched it away. As you can plainly see, this notebook can persist through myth's loops. You were the first to realize this, Didi. Didi san glanced through the notebook. The expression on her face stiffened the more she turned the pages. Is this really the truth? Kiki muttered that to herself. She seemed like she was about to cry after reading that her head exploded on the twelfth day. Yuri nodded. That's all she could do. She had no words of consolation for Kiki. Looks like I wasted my life. Lili san scolded herself. She likely finished reading the entirety of the notebook. That's not true. 
because I became aware of this notebook? That's right. Lisan was hoarded back at Yuri. And what significance does that hold? It'll be the key to us escaping. Escape? There's no point when we can... You mean Ragnarok? And that's the event that will send us back to our respective worlds, right? Lady Song looked over at me. Kiki said, yes, at roughly the same time that I nodded back at Lady Song. That was indeed something that Valkyrie talked about during the first myth. I remembered that. Do you know about Norse mythology? Yuri took the notebook from Lady Song as she asked her that. How the hell would I know about that? It's a type of mythology in the world that Mato and I are from. Ragnarok means an end. I stated the word that passed through my head. I had practically no knowledge when it came to Norse mythology. The only time I'd ever seen the word Ragnarok was used was in video games. Yep. That's right. The end. And that's the same meaning as our world then, right, Kiki? Yes. Hang on, the word Ragnarok existed in your world too? Just some silly word that appears in some stupid mythology of ours. Don't ask me to explain. Lady? Something must have happened between Kiki and Lady san involving this word. I could tell that just- I could tell that much just from their facial expressions, but I didn't pry any further. Anyway, it means the same thing. Yamagami, that Ragnarok word, the end. Couldn't you say that's what this story is aiming for? As I brought up earlier, I was of the same opinion. If the story came to an end, we'd be returned to our worlds. It made the most sense. That's true. The world they live in is Asgard, though. Asgard? According to Norse mythology, it's the land of the gods. It's where Ragnarok is supposed to take place. Wait, huh? She doesn't call this place by that name, no. Even though she's so caught up in that Norse mythology that she calls her own world Asgard. The words used to describe Miss World are all original. Why do you think that's the case? Because myth isn't the target of Ragnarok? That, that means that myth itself will have no end. And that's a rather impulsive conclusion, shadowless. How can you be so sure that's the truth? Everything seems to be based on North mythology. It just depends on how much the author is enamored with that mythology. Lady Song leaned against the tree. She seemed unhappy. I don't get it. What is she planning? To fulfill Ragnarok, that much is certain. Although, without us knowing her intentions behind that, we can only guess what her true goal is. Inevitable silence fell upon the stage. I knew what we were all thinking. There were too many mysteries surrounding myth. To know the truth, we'd have to either get in contact with the author or wait for some development involving myth to occur. Damn it, Shimon. I was mad at Shimon. We had far too little information for us to make any serious attempt at escaping from here. If only I had tied up Shimon back when I had the chance. I realized that was a pointless endeavor though. Myth's autonomy allowed us some degree of freedom, but Shimon was at the center of this world, and it didn't change the fact that trying to tie her up would have be a risky act. If by stripping her of her freedom we caused some sort of mutation in the world, then I'd maybe not even have been able to write in the notebook yesterday and I'd keep repeating the same mistakes. Which made me think that writing in the notebook instead of trying to pry answers out of Shimon was a better course of action. Right, where's Valkyrie? Kiki asked us that, perhaps because she remembered her after I brought her up. She escaped, saying the scenario went off track. Off track? The myth only occurred because the notebook was ruined. I was able to prevent that from happening since I had already gained my will beyond before that point. 
which suggests to now. You see, was Shimon or Valkyrie disappeared after that? That's right. And what will happen to us this time around? Either we go through the scenes like usual, or... Something new might happen. Or some wild exception would bring this loop to an end today, maybe. The author likely didn't want anything out of the ordinary to happen before it ended. And the fact we regained our wills meant that, for the author, there was no merit to this loop. If the author is controlling myth, then I think nothing would change. But... I think something new will happen. Otherwise, it would make no sense for the Kiki and uh, the Didi and Kiki appeared with their wills still intact. Isn't this because you two already regained your wills? No. Didi regained her will rather quickly before, though. I'm not sure on which particular day. Meto hasn't written anything about any everyone regaining their will just because one person has either. So something made us cognizant of ourselves, and that would bring forth new developments? In that case, it can't be the type of development the author had prepared. The author doesn't want us to move on our own. That Shimon tried to get rid of the notebook is proof of that. Right. In that case, the existence of that world would bring forth the new developments would be... Myth itself. Myth is a blank space within a blank page. Could it really bring forth its own developments? The last time around was just a blank. If something was going to happen in Myth's will, then that would mean that I should be able to write that down in my notebook. That'd be desirable for that to happen for us, given our lack of information, but I couldn't imagine something like that occurring so easily. And I think, with the changing of the scene, I think I'm going to end off this episode. Because I don't remember how long the next scene is, and I don't want another 30-something minute episode. Um, yeah. How is myth going to evolve? Are there going to be any changes? Is there going to be an exception, I think is the word that was used? Uh, yeah. Really, it can boil down, it can be boiled down to what the fuck is going to happen next. And, well, I think we'll find out the answer to that and possibly more next time. And I hope to see you all there. Thank you.